Hey, online church, so glad that you're tuned in today. We are talking about the power of the local church. I'm preaching a message called The Breakfast Club. And I'm gonna talk about a moment where Jesus had breakfast with his disciples. And that little breakfast club would go on to change the world, turn the world upside down. They were the early church. Peter, the disciple, and several other disciples would be used by God in extraordinary ways. All they had to do was say yes. In the message today, I'm sitting with a bunch of our volunteers, staff members, members in the church, people that just said yes to God and allowed God to use their life for His glory. So let's get right into the message today, The Breakfast Club. And I have victory in my life because Jesus lives in me. All right, give someone a high five or a hug. You may be seated. Awesome, awesome. So good to see everyone this morning. You are in the right place today. We welcome those that are watching online. Let's give a warm welcome to all of our online church. Amazing, amazing. We have had some incredible praise reports in the last few weeks, and I was praying. I had this series lined up. We had a video for it. Our media team had been working on it. I was going to start a brand new series this weekend, and God said, hold up. I said, what, God? And he said, if you fast forward and go right into a new series and don't take time to celebrate what I've done and what I'm doing, what I just did at Easter and the Spring Break Missions and the Tulsa Dream Center, you're going to miss out on an opportunity to teach a great lesson. You know, some of the best times that I can teach my kids how to do the right thing is when they do the right thing to stop and celebrate. Liam, you did a great job. Here's an M&M, &M, you know, to celebrate, give a reward and take a moment to teach a lesson. You obeyed your mom. You said, yes, ma'am. You didn't hit your brother in the face, you know? <laughs> and so we're gonna take a moment today to stop and celebrate what God has done, what he's doing, what he's about to do through this church. And what makes this weekend of celebration even better as I'm joined with some people that have been a part of it, just like you, that have been inviting, serving, uh, uh, giving out, sacrificing to help see the kingdom of God expand. And what also makes it exciting is this weekend happens to be our anniversary weekend. Victory is 37 years old today. Happy birthday, Victory. And um, it is an honor to lead such a generous church, such a servant-hearted church, such a, a humble church, a church that is is so committed to seeing people experience jesus in a real way and loving god loving people bringing forgiveness acceptance and and hope to people and so if you have a bible i want us to turn to john chapter 21 and uh, yeah you can make some noise so little lead up before john 21 there was a moment right before john 21 i want to summarize it but it's really powerful there was a, a disciple named thomas that missed easter he wasn't there the first time Jesus showed up to show all the disciples that he was alive. And so the disciples were so excited, um, but Thomas didn't see it. And, and they're trying to tell Thomas, they're trying to explain. Now, Thomas, we know you saw Jesus die on the cross, but he's alive now. Thomas said, uh-uh, I don't believe it. I won't believe it until I see the nail marks in his hands, until I see the spear that went into his side, until I can touch Jesus for myself, I won't believe it. And the thing I love, is that Jesus doesn't rebuke Thomas for his unbelief, for his doubt, Sam. In fact, Jesus comes back just for Thomas to show himself real. And the first thing I want to share with you today is that Jesus wants you to have a firsthand encounter with him. He doesn't want you just riding off the coattails of your parents' faith. That's something I learned as a young kid, Jason, is that when I was a little boy, I knew my parents heard from God. I knew Billy Joe had a relationship with Jesus. Sharon had a relationship with Jesus. What I didn't realize is that Jesus wanted to have a relationship with Paul, not just through Billy Joe, through Sharon. Jesus wants you to have a personal encounter with him. So Jesus shows up, and every time Jesus shows up, except for one time with Mary Magdalene, but every other time he shows up with a group of people, a group of believers, a, a, a community of people that were connected to each other. Because this was Jesus' heartbeat, that there would be a gathering of people that they would be called the church. And the first time we see church was in Matthew 16. He said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He was talking about a community. So now we show up to John 21. And this is now Jesus has shown himself a few times to different communities. He's stirring up the church. 
He's wanting them to know it's a big deal. Resurrection was a big deal. Don't fast forward, don't start a new series. Stop and celebrate what I just did on Easter Sunday. Stop and celebrate that the resurrection is so important to realize this changes everything. This changes everything. This changes why the church is so important and so needed even in 2018. So we get to John 21. It says, after all this, Jesus appeared again to the disciples, but this time it was by the sea. And this is how he did it. And I'm reading from the message version. It says that Simon Peter told the other disciples, I'm going fishing. I'm going back to what I used to do. I'm gonna go fishing. They said, we're going with you. So they got into a boat and they went out that night, but they caught nothing. And all of a sudden there was this stranger on the shore and he asked, how's the fishing going? And they said, no, not so good. And uh, so he said, cast your nets to the other side and see what happens. You know, the people that are up on this stage today are people that have decided to say yes to casting their nets on the other side. Maybe, maybe you've had a moment where you've come up with nothing. You've maybe hit rock bottom. You feel like there's not much you can do in your own strength. Would you dare to believe that Jesus' words are true? That it's time to cast your nets to the other side. That God still has provision for you, but you're gonna have to start following his lead instead of trying to do things in your own way. These people, their lives have been impacted because they said yes. I love that Jesus said, see what happens. Throw your net to the other side and you will find what I'm talking about. And they did. And they brought in a huge haul of fish. So much, this large number of fish was overflowing in their nets. When you invite Jesus to be a part of your business, you will never run out. When you partner with Jesus, in your business, you will never come up empty. He always provides more than enough. So watch this. Peter gets excited. He's like, that's Jesus. That's my master. And so he jumps off the boat. He starts swimming. I love Peter's just ambition, his tenacity. He's excited. He starts swimming. The rest of the guys, they're pulling the fish. And when they got to the shore, there Jesus was sitting around a fire with some coals on it, with some fish and some bread. Jesus was making breakfast. This was waterfront grill, Sunday brunch. Come on. This was red lobster. This was fish daddies right here with Jesus with the main fish daddy. And so he says, come on, let's have breakfast. <laughs> Y'all are like, this is crazy. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus said, bring your fish. Come on. I'm not lying. He said, bring your fish. And, uh, they brought all their fish and we get to verse 12. Check this out. Verse 12. Jesus said, uh, breakfast is ready. I want to title this message, the breakfast club. Everybody say, the breakfast club. Come on, say it with some attitude. The breakfast club. Lord, I pray that you'd speak to us this morning. God, I pray that we would leave today with a greater revelation of who you are and your purpose for our lives and for the local church at large. God, I thank you for what you've done at Victory. We celebrate 37 years of making an impact in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the United States of America, and to the ends of the earth. Lord, I thank you for my mom and dad, Billy Joe and Sharon Doherty, that said yes 37 years ago, that started this breakfast club in Tulsa every Sunday, feasting on the word of God, celebrating community, building your church. And God, I thank you that we're just getting started. The best is still ahead. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Thank you so much, Michael. So we've got a group of people up here that are part of this church, just like you, members, volunteers, some staff, and they've been a part of what God's been doing these last few weeks. Uh, the thing I love that Jesus did with the breakfast club is he was processing with them. He was sitting around and they were talking about his heartbeat, his mission, what he wanted to do through Peter and through John and through Thomas and through Andrew and Nathaniel. And he was talking to them about the future, but he was also celebrating the past. That's what we're going to do today. And so we've had a few of these people that were involved with Easter and uh, a few of them that were involved with Spring Break Missions, a few that have been involved with the Tulsa Dream Center. So we're talking about the power of the local church being the church. Jesus really shared with his disciples two main things. And I want you to write this down. Love God, love people. If we do anything as a church, if we can get those two things right, we can turn the world upside down. We don't have to wait for the White House to fix our nation. The church house can fix the nation, right? If we will love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves, man, that right there, those are the two big things. He looked at his breakfast club. He goes, do you love me? That was the first question he asked Peter on John 21. Do you love me? He didn't say, do you love 
church ministry? Do you love to preach? Do you love activity? He said, do you love me? Because if you'll love me, I can teach you how to preach. I don't call the qualified, I qualify the called. Peter wasn't a great preacher, but Jesus made him a great preacher because Peter loved Jesus. If you'll love God first, I'm telling you, all the insecurities you have, all the weaknesses, all the struggles, God can fix that if you'll just fall in love with Jesus and then allow that love to flow out for your neighbors. So I wanna show you a video of a, a, crew, a crew of people up here, the Breakfast Club, that was involved in missions just two weeks ago in Honduras and what God did as they reached out with God's love for the people of Honduras. Check this out. I hear the sound of sons and daughters. I see the old dream wild in young imagining. Young and noble dream. I hear the sound of earth surrender. Wonders above and signs below for all to see. We've been set free, so open up the doors and say. Jesus! 30,000 people ministered to in one week. We've sent over 160 people. I wanna first uh, introduce our youth pastor, Sam Grosso. Sam, you have a microphone? Is there a microphone over here? If not, then we'll get you one. AJ's passing it over. Um, so Sam, talk about what we did while we were there and what their generosity uh, was able to accomplish Yes, there. truly, and thank you so much. There were so many students that personally talked with me that uh, your generosity was how they got there. One student in particular, he truly was down to the wire the last day, had $1,000 left, and people rallied around him at his job. They were passing a hat and raising money. People donated, somebody bought his car. I mean, so God will show up and use you to get students. We actually uh, took about 150 students on a charter plane so we filled an entire plane down into this country which Hold is insane up. that's amazing we <laughs> filled an entire plane was the it whole like thing. a 737 or what yeah, was it yeah one of one of the big ones one i got to talk ones. over yeah. the pa systems dream come true <laughs> hey i got to say this how many of you could see a day where this church was able to send missionaries every week to other countries on a charter plane that could bring the gospel to people and fly back come on God wants us to start taking the limits off what he could do through the local church. Yes. That's awesome, Sam. It's amazing. And, and really, we saw these students, you know, you see numbers like that, and I think sometimes you wonder, hey, could God use me like that? And that's how the students felt before they left. Uh, but one student in particular, she actually started writing down what she was expecting God to do on the trip. She said, God, I want to pray for salvation with somebody and see them get saved, and I want blind eyes to be open. And I she actually that. got to experience both of those things happen at altar calls during ministry time. She saw blind eyes open, and a man was able to read the track and the book that we were giving him. And she got to pray a personal prayer of salvation with somebody. You see, the gospel message, it's fluid, and it wants to go through you. Streams yeah. of living water. And if you'll let the gospel go through you, watch what God will, who God will bring to you. And uh, so it's powerful. powerful. It's powerful, so powerful what God did. You know, you could sit in classes all day and hear about apologetics and defending the faith. But when you experience a miracle and you see it firsthand, that right there just kind of is like, Man, you can't argue miracles. Atheists can't argue miracles. For those teenagers to see blind eyes open, we had one guy who, uh, one of his legs was two inches shorter than the other leg. And through on the mission trip, they were praying for him, his leg grew back. He had, his spine was misaligned because of having to walk differently every day. His leg actually grew out. We're talking like supernatural miracles in 2018. Don't tell me our God is not real. He is moving and he's moving through anyone that says yes. I want us to say this. Say these words with me, just say yes. If you will just say yes, God can use you 
in incredible ways. Mom, you and dad just said yes. 37 years ago, this week is our church anniversary. Happy birthday, Victory, 37 years old. You and dad said yes. You were on this mission trip, you saw God move, but you've, I mean, today, here we stand in this amazing building, this amazing ministry, because you and dad were just ordinary two people from Arkansas, you just said yes. Yes, and moving in faith. Yeah. Because when you move in faith, you, you can't see what's ahead. Yeah. And you have to just believe and take steps. Yeah. And so, you know, let me just say this, because somebody said, well, why did you pick the murder capital of the world to go to on this mission trip? But let me just say that in 2014, we went there as a church for the first time with other ministries that took different states of Honduras. There's 18 states. And so different ministries took a different state. The state we went to this time was the same state that we went to before, the capital city. And all over at that time, there was a push for a new Honduras, and the, pa the president actually said, we are going to be a new Honduras. We've got to have God in our country. And so yeah. he then uh, met at this time, this was before Miles Monroe had passed, and Miles met with them, his leadership cabinet and himself. And so everybody all across the, the nation was, being, was saying, we are now a new Honduras. We are now a new Honduras. So what happened after that was, I mean, there was miracles that took place during that time, but we had a teacher rally for one thing uh, with some of our teachers from VCS and some from ORU that went, but uh, there was all kinds of outreaches going on all through that time, young people and older people going. But um, uh, during that time, the president said, every child in, in our public schools as well as in the private schools will have a Bible, and they will read it 15 minutes a day. Wow. I said, to, I said to some other people, God, if you can do it in Honduras, you can do it in America. Come this on. was in 2014. Come on. Come on. So, um, so anyway, we, had, uh, we, we went back in 2015. A, a small group went back in 2015. And then uh, we saw people healed of Zika virus and people healed of uh, uh, goiters, you know, uh, shrinking on their neck and just different types of healings that took place. But this trip, when we went, I didn't get to go the whole week, Paul, but I went and the first day landed, went to a teacher rally, and then went to, uh, we did some ministry at a church that night. The next day, we did pastor's conference with a bunch of pastors. The next night, Paul's preached to thousands of young people, probably about 5,000 in this uh, church that we went to. And then uh, after that, the next day, we did a women's conference. Uh, Sarah and myself uh, were involved in that and some of our, our team. But we saw people that came in those services, and, and I ended up praying for a young girl that had been abused. The Holy Spirit just began to show me things by the word of knowledge, gift of the word of knowledge the whole time we were there. And I think that happened with all the team that went, yeah. that we began to sense things in our spirit and calling it out, and then God would do it. Come and on. so then um, after that, you know, uh, coming back, uh, you know, I've thought about the fact that, you know, when we go on these trips, we're going in faith. We don't know what exactly is going to happen, yeah. but we believe that as we go, God's going to confirm his word with signs and wonders and miracles following. And we always have a prayer team that prays the whole time that we're gone. In fact, the team may not have known this, but they were praying day and night, 24 hours a day. There was people covering this awesome. in prayer. So I just want to encourage awesome. you. You know, the thing I love about what she's sharing here too is when we just say yes, when we simply obey and we step out in faith, it, it takes faith to say yes to go on a mission trip, to say yes, to join a connect group, to uh, give financially into the church everything that we do for God. It requires faith. Without faith, we cannot please God. But I also love that this church is marked by the mission that Jesus had. And when Jesus was having his breakfast club meetings with his disciples, he really told them, if you can get two things right, you can change the world. Yeah. And it was love God, love people. That's what we do as a church. That is our mission. Love God, love people. If you get anything out of the message today, if you could get those two things right, I'm telling you, you could change the world. You could change your neighborhood. You could change your family. You could save your kids, your parents. When you get the love of God inside you, it draws people in to experience the power of God, which can change their life. Lauren, you said yes. You were sitting out. Mom, will you pass the microphone to her? You were sitting out in church. Tell them your story of how you ended up on this mission trip. Well, I moved to Tulsa, and I just joined Victory Church back in the fall, and I was sitting just on the balcony right there by myself and they were 
calling people and telling people about missions trips. And I was sitting there and the Lord was stirring up in my heart about how I'm supposed to go on one of these trips. And I was kind of sitting there wrestling with the Lord, like, are you sure? I don't know if I'm gonna be available. Like I was making up all these excuses. And I just sat there and I said, Lord, do you want me to go? And it was an overwhelming yes. And, I, and he said, if, if any of you are feeling like you're supposed to go, will you just raise your hand in your seat? And I was just sitting there by myself and I just stuck my hand out. And from that confirmation of my spirit, it was, Lord, I'm gonna give up my time. I'm gonna give up whatever finances, whatever I need to do to serve in this church, in this manner of what you've called me to do, I'm gonna give my yes and just walk boldly in that. Come on. Everybody say, just say yes. I love it, Lauren. You know, I was part of this group when I was at Oral Roberts University as a college student. There was these two seniors, Rob Fouch and Nick Miller, and they invited freshmen, sophomores, and juniors to join their breakfast club. And that's what they called it, the breakfast club. And it was in the alcove of our dormitory, and these seniors would pour into freshmen, sophomores, juniors, but you had to get up at 5.30 a.m. <laughs> so it was a sacrifice. But they kept saying to me, Paul, just say yes, just say yes. And I was like, no. You know, I, I like my sleep, man. But I remember going to the breakfast club meetings and man, just sitting there with Nick and Rob and those guys in the alcove. I got, I loved my theology classes at ORU, but there's something powerful about when you're in community. I got so much out of those connect group meetings, the breakfast club meetings, where we would just share stories and we would talk about the, the dreams that were in our hearts and challenge each other to just say yes to the God opportunities that were right in front of us. You know, one thing I love about Victory is that we're not just involved, involved globally, we are heavily involved locally. And I wanna shout out Aaron Johnson, who serves as the director of the Dream Center. AJ, this past week, many of our church members, lots of churches have been involved serving in North Tulsa during the teacher strike. Tell them what their generosity has been a part of. Well, in talking about just say yes, we have incredible staff at the Tulsa Dream Center. We didn't know what to expect this week for the teacher walkout. And there are some of the pictures, over 683 students came to the Tulsa Dream Center. Wow. This wow. week, over 1,400 meals were given out to boys and girls. Hey, that's the reason to shout right Come there. Come on. And... You know, what's powerful is a lot of parents said, if there wasn't a place for my child, I was gonna lose my job this week. Wow. And so the church stepping up, and we were, we were a little nervous because the first day we had just under 100, and the last day we had over 200. And there's a, a woman in our church, I didn't share it in the last one, but a woman in our church is involved in an organization, and she came up to me before the teacher walkout, and she said, whatever you guys need, our organization is gonna step up. So this woman right here in, her, in our church, uh, she had been in an organization not happy, but I called her Esther, and she started crying because God had her position for such a time as this to help over 683 boys and girls Come on. at the Tulsa You Church. know, I love, AJ, there's always an opportunity to serve. There's always an opportunity. The, the, the breakfast club that surrounded Jesus, they were marked for their love for God, their love for people, and their servant's heart. They had a heart to serve. They looked for opportunities where people needed help and they would see the need and meet it. They would see the hurt and heal it. That's what the Dream Center is doing. That's what this church is doing. And God wants you to be a part. He needs you on this team. God could use anybody, but he wants to use you. Everyone's invited to the Breakfast Club. AJ, one more thought on this. Um, you got to do devotions with the kids. A lot of these kids, they rely on the free breakfast, free lunch at their public school, and so Dream Center was able to provide that for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't have a meal. But on top of that, you gave them a spiritual meal, a devotion. Tell them real quick about the confessions the kids were sharing. Every morning we did our victory confession with our boys and girls, and we have a Dream Center confession that we said. And we also did, the theme last week was I am. Everybody say I am. I am. And so many of the students in North Tulsa don't have art. So we did an art project Well, they, they held, held up a mirror and on one side they had to write I am and on the other side they had to draw a picture of themselves. And so we focused on, hey, I am smart, I am beautiful, I am successful, I love God. And one of the girls, uh, her name is Cindy, she's been at the Dream Center for several years, didn't know what a world changer was. So I said, come here, so I explained to her what it was. And by the end of the week, and we, we told the boys and girls, I am is so important because what comes after that can shape your reality. Wow, that's So the good. power of I am is so incredible, even in your own personal life. So by the end of the week, every day, she said, Pastor AJ, I'm a world changer. I'm a world Come changer. Come on. I love it. Jason Wilson.
So this guy grew up in Victor Christian School, and um, his first mission trip, he got kicked off the trip because he was a bad boy. He, he got in trouble. Yes. And I remember thinking he was so cool. I was like, man, I like him. My dad was like, okay, it's okay. Don't, don't, don't look up to him as a, as, a, you know, as a role model. God's still working in his life. <laughs> My dad believed in Jason, but he was praying for God to change Jason's heart, and God did. And now he helped lead our spring break missions trips 13 years later. Yes. God's done a work in your heart. You went to Bible college. You went through the internship. Just tell real quick a testimony of, of being a part of it. So I have the honor to, to serve as the uh, short-term missions director here at Victory. And um, it's just amazing uh, just to see uh, how changed uh, lives are when you say yes to the call of God. And, and, you know, going on missions is saying yes to the Great Commission. Yeah. Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples. Yes. And also God's word says that when you go, these signs will follow those who believe. Yeah. And, and we saw that on this mission trip, Pastor Paul. It's not just one or two testimonies of blind eyes being opened or, or the, the leg uh, coming out. We saw uh, every, through all of our teams, we, we had a, a blind eye testimony being open. Come we on. had different healings that happened, and God used students to do that. He, we had an it. adult team as well. God used Jesus, members of Victory to bring those miracles about. Come on. I love it. I love it. Nicole Billup, share a quick testimony. You were on the trip. You also serve in the internship yeah, and yeah. Easter. You've been going nonstop. Yes. Have you gotten any sleep yet? Uh, I did plan to sleep on April 2nd, so that's when the sleep started okay. happening. So okay, there's good. That. Yeah, but no, just like you said, I mean, this was my first time leading a trip out. I actually took the ninth graders, and man, God... I was even just talking to somebody in the lobby because I'm so grateful that like even afterwards, these students are still having relationship and community with each other and with their leaders. And that has just blessed me so much. Awesome. But I mean, going into this trip, like I remember there was, um, I was scheduled to preach and God had given me a word like the day or that morning before it's about power over fear. So I'm up all night prepping and just looking up everything about fear and, um, we just had a miscommunication, so I didn't get to preach that night, but I was like, God, I know you gave me that word about power over fear, and so I was just holding on to that. And so we left our state of Yoro, and we were going to San Pedro Sula for the main conference. And so um, by the end of the night, we'd gone through the altar call. There was a woman at the front, and my team, I had all these girls, they were praying with her. And um, it, the ushers had tried to seat her, and they were like, no, 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 we're going to keep praying with her because God was doing something. And so they were just following the Holy Spirit, and so they were just praying in tongues over this woman. So I came over because I was like, it's towards the end of the night. We have to go. And so I brought a girl over who spoke Spanish, and I was like, okay, just ask her what she wants. And so she's translating, and she's saying, this woman, she said that she feels fear. She feels like she can't sleep, like there's something in her room that is going to come and get her. And immediately I knew, I was like, that was the word that God had given me about power over fear. So we are praying for this woman we were casting out the spirit of fear and I was just so blessed to be there with my team with these freshmen casting the spirit of the woman seeing God work through them and through us together as a team and you know the message I thought was for you know a church service was actually directly for this woman and so God just worked and there was just grace throughout the entire thing there was energy powerful. and strength I was so blessed powerful so blessed. powerful I love the local church well, I want to show you a video of what your generosity did, not just in missions overseas, but last weekend right here at Easter at Victory. Check this out. Seven people experienced victory last weekend right here 
I want to give you a shout out. How many of you invited someone, whether it was on social media or right there in your workplace or handed out a flyer? Thank you so much for inviting people. Lives were impacted. Just to contrast that number, last year was our highest ever attendance at, at Easter, and we, had, we, had, we saw 32,000 people experience Easter. That was combining online, physical, all of its stuff, all the kids that came through Champions Club. This year, you not only doubled that, you went, you exceeded that. You say, well, Paul, it's not really about numbers. Every number is a life. Every, don't ever say it's not about numbers. God put an entire book in the Bible called Numbers. He cares about numbers. And God cares about bringing people to heaven. There's so many parables in Luke and, and, and beyond where God's heartbeat shows up. And he's like, I want you to invite everybody. Go to the highways, the byways. Go everywhere inviting everyone. God cares about lives going to heaven. He cares about depopulating hell. God's will is that everyone would be saved, that everyone would know Jesus. I'm so thankful for my brother John, writing, acting, helping direct. John, man, I'm proud of you, bro. You are an awesome man of God. Unconventional, powerful. <laughs> So John, give a quick testimony of being part of this and, um, and share with everyone today just a little bit of that behind the scenes stuff there. Praise God. You know, I think from our sound men to the people that acted in it, to the parents that allowed their kids to be there till midnight, you know, to even some of our ushers acting in it and being disciples. Marquise. Marquise, come up here, bro. Come sit up here with us. <laughs> he still has got his Simon the Zealot hair do going on. Fireball. You know, I think that all of us are proof of the resurrection. Every single person in here. Um, you know, in the, in the reading that Paul read about, it was the story of doubting Thomas. And then Thomas, he said, I want to see the nails in the hand. I want to touch the nails. I want to touch the nail holes. And then I want to touch that, that cut in his side. So he wanted three different types of proof that the resurrection was the real deal. And, you know, two weeks before uh, the production, me and my wife, we were eating and we invited this, our waiter uh, from, from Outback Steakhouse. Yeah. And, uh, and so we invited him and he was like, nah, man. He's like, plays are not my thing. And I was like, I, okay. And he was like, and neither is church. My mom forced me to go when I was young. I'm just not about it. And a scripture that kept on going, uh, that, that kept on resonating back in late December, whenever uh, the script was being written was in the message version of John 5, that we are to bring out the God colors into the world because the resurrection and a true relationship with God is bringing color to a gray world of religion. And for people to it come alive to them. So he said he wasn't gonna come. And then, you know, Thursday night before our first service on Friday, I got this text and he was like, dude, I need seven seats. And I was like, who is this? And he's like, man, this is me from Outback. And I was like, okay. And, uh, and he said, my mom is in town and she's forcing us to go to church on Good Friday. He's like, the only place I know about was who, where I was invited. And I don't, know if, I don't know if Greg is here today, but he, he came and that night, I, I didn't really get to see him until the altar call. He's there on the fourth row and I see him and his whole family and he's just, and they're all just weeping, just big chopped up brother, looks like a, a you know, a college, a college ball player. And I, I walked over and I was like, hey. And he was just like, oh, man, what the bleep did I just see? <laughs> Those are the people we need. And, and, uh, and, and in that, he was just like, I'm floored. I, I, I can't, and, and, and he was emotional as a family he was emotional. And they just couldn't explain about the experience that God, and he's like, he's like, but this is what was proof to me. Just like Thomas needed the proof. He said, from when I drove in the parking lot team, and then, and then when I, when I walked in, someone shook my hand. He's like, that was weird. 
And he said, but everyone was so friendly. And he said, then there was ushers that led me to my seat. And he was just like, and the people down there praying at the altar. And he's like, they're just like me. And he said, it was the culmination of that. And then the imagery of, I put a space between me and heaven. But whenever we raise the cross and we show Jesus bridging the gap between heaven and man and what Jesus did, it was by his wounds. That was what brought the proof of the resurrection. And it was because of you guys. So powerful. Rob Thompson, you served all weekend, you and Elise, and your daughter Harmony acted in the play. Share a little bit as a parent, being involved in the church and letting your daughter serve in the church. Yeah, Pastor Paul, uh, Harmony is 10 years old, and, and she had been asking to participate in the Easter productions for a few years, and we knew that there was a, a significant time commitment involved, and so we wanted to make sure that she was aware of that, aware of what she was committing to. and. And so we said yes as parents to allow her to participate. And uh, she just, she loved it so much, just the whole experience. And it was great for us as parents to see her excited to invite people to church. And so being at the grocery store, I remember my wife telling me, Harmony gave an invitation to the clerk that was checking us out and said, hey, you should come to our Easter production. And, and that just continued. We, had, uh, we're, we have a blended family, and there's individuals in our family that don't know God, aren't a part of a church, and we had been inviting them to come uh, for a while, and it just hadn't worked out where they came. But because she was in the production and she invited them to come, they said, hey, we want to support, so we will be there. And it was just great to see God do so much in their lives, not only the were they asking to come once? They were coming to multiple product, multiple shows, multiple services, and then inviting other people with them to come as well. And there were several uh, people in their family that had special needs. And so when they saw the video of the Champions Club, it struck a chord. And only God knew that, that that's what was going to really stir them. And so after the service, them asking her, Harmony, can we come back to church with you? We want to be a part and we want to bring our, our, our kids with us. And so it was great for us as, as parents. She was blessed. We were blessed. And just to see how God could use her, just from saying yes, how God could use her to affect so many others' lives. And so we're grateful. Come on. I love that, Rob. Everybody say, just say yes. Miriam, you wrote a lot of the songs. There was one song that really impacted some people in the room, and you shared this story with me, and it just all the more confirmed. Because there were moments in the production during rehearsal that I was like, man, are we, are we for real going to do all this? And I was like, I, there was a little things that kind of jolted me, but I heard God say, Paul, calm down. Remember, <laughs> you're not just reaching church people, you're reaching the unchurched, the lost, people that need to experience Jesus in a fresh way. Plus, God told me, don't put me in a box because I'll break your box. I'll show you. God shows up in the most unusual ways. And uh, what he did through this one scene, share the story. So 1 Corinthians 127 says, God will use the foolish things of this world con to confound or test the conventional wisdom of those who think they are wise. So you got to be careful with that, okay? When we do these guys, we don't do this for you. We love you. We're doing this for the lost that are coming through those doors. The ones that have the tattoo on their face and the nose ring and the chain and everything else. I love the way we portrayed our disciples this year. That was spot on for me. I, I laughed every service. I was up there going, yes. <laughs> anyway, speaking of, so I'm hiding up there so I can see kind of everybody who's coming in the room. And so at the 11 a.m. service Sunday morning, in walks these six girls, two blondes, two brunettes, two redheads. I knew exactly well, I think the Spirit of God told me what background they were coming from, but they, I watched where they sat, and uh, during this, the, the, the production, we got to this song where we portrayed Mary Magdalene, who in this case was a prostitute. Erica played her part. You rock, girlfriend. I love you. She did Come a on, great Erica. job. It was her first time to do anything like this. Did she do an amazing job? Yeah. And so... Hey, real quick, cool testimony. She played the part of Mary Magdalene. Yes. She and her husband right there have been believing God for breakthrough in their finances. Last night, God provided supernaturally to pay their whole first year of ORU college tuition. Bigger, bigger than their combined annual salary. Come on, Dr. Wilson. 
All right, continue the story. I just love celebrating praise I reports. Do. So I turned my head sideways. Now, when she's singing the song, this is the story about Mary. When I was young, dancing to the moon, eyes full of stars, then I grew up too soon. John wrote most of the words to most of these songs, and I just kind of put the package around them. He's anointed, I'm telling you. He doesn't think he's a musician, but he is. Anyway, I helped paint that picture with him. And so she's singing her song. Well, I turned around, and out of the corner of my eye, I see three out of the six up there, and three of them are really wiping their eyes. And I'm thinking, this is really early in the program to be tearing up, so I think we're hitting a nerve. That's good. And so I just felt to pray over them. I prayed through them, over them the entire service as the thing went out. The Holy Spirit, just speak to them. Show them how much you love them, Jesus. Show them how much you love them. My heart broke for them. And, and at the end, Jesus, they responded. They wouldn't come down to the altar. Let me tell you something, guys, we need you. We need every one of you to be there to catch these fish that jump in the boat. You may not agree with the way, the way we did it, but it doesn't matter. Jesus said we will be known by our fruit. There was fruit up and down these aisles and crowding these altars every service. And we need those believers to stand behind. So I found two and I said, go get them. Because I was stuck in my post. I couldn't leave. I wanted to find out what happened. And so the lady came back and she says, well, that was an interesting story. She said, somebody brought a flyer to the strip club where they all dance. And she said, what? <laughs> yeah. So whoever did that, thank you. Thank you. We don't judge how long you stayed. We're just glad you did it. All right. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, the point is the gospel got in and that's what we were after. And so awesome. Awesome. <laughs> they responded and the story was they, they all responded. They weren't coming down to the altars and she said, somebody brought a flyer. One of them had already been to a previous production and she said to her other sisters, she says, y'all to go. This is, they don't, they're not super preachy. It's a good production. You'll enjoy it. We, they didn't have anything else to do at 11 o'clock Saturday morning, so they came. And so awesome. that's what happens. And so they got saved. And the bottom line, guys, the fruit. Jesus said we are going to be known by the fruit that we produce. And I want to see fruit like that walking through the doors every time this, this church is in session, every time we do an illustrated sermon, every time we do whatever it is the Holy Spirit's told us to do. We are going to bear that kind of fruit. I love it. I love it. So good, Miriam. Some of you might be wondering, you know, this is a little different, Paul. You normally preach a sermon. How many are enjoying this, though, this conversation? Okay, good, good. What we're doing right now is we're celebrating that lost people are being saved. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, all of heaven throws a party. They have a breakfast party, man. They just get together and go, somebody just got saved. Some husband just repented. Some wife just came back to church. Some teenage son decided not to commit suicide and to give his life to Jesus. Let's throw a party. Let's celebrate over every person from every story what God's doing. So that's what we're doing today. You know, Jonathan, you served in the drama. Uh, you were the man that was demon-possessed. And uh, that was a wild scene. Yeah. But so many people connected with it. I had people after the production come up to me and say, that scene reminded me that the power of God is stronger than every demonic force that's trying to mess with my family, my son, my marriage. Tell a quick testimony being a part of that. Yeah. Oh, wow, that was there. Um, yeah, so I played the demoniac, and in my mind, whenever Pastor John told me the concept, I thought, wow, this is gonna be super cool and super fun, and I thought that's where it was gonna stay, because I'm thinking how many people can relate to being filled with demons. Um, but then, one of the guys in the scene, one of the guys in black there, um, said a lady pulled him aside and said, hey, your scene really spoke to our family, because we're going through a lot of demonic oppression in our family and in our household. And they went down to the alt uh, altar call and they felt something being lifted and they felt free from that. And so, I mean, it just, I mean, it just went to show me that no matter how insignificant you think your part is, if you let God into it, I mean, there's no telling what he'll do. Come on, I love that, Jonathan, I love it. Kevin Bjorkland, you were running all the media behind the scenes, 45,000 plus people streamed online. We had people getting saved on Facebook. We're almost done, but you gotta hear this. Give a quick testimony behind the scenes media. It's, it's really phenomenal actually being up here and hearing all of this because there's so much more that meets the eye to victory. And you know, we're celebrating 37 years. That's 37 years of people giving their life to the Lord through 
the ministry of victory. And then we see global outreach. This is a globally minded church. And then we see what we're doing locally, just on a regular service, having this huge production, investing so much into it, to drawing in the lost. And, and it all comes together. There's people all over the world that call victory their church. And we only have so many seats in this auditorium, but it's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people all over the world that say, man, victory is my home church. And they got to experience it. But not only that, just like you, you know, there's only so many seats in here, so we can only bring so many people in to eight services. We can max capacity at, at whatever the seats can hold. But by opening, it, opening this up online, being able to invite people, our friends and our families who live out of state or, and are going through stuff and need to hear about Jesus, it's so powerful. Every story that we hear, people who watch the production in the house, the same thing happened all over the globe online and it's because we sent a text or went online and said hey check this out my church is doing this this week and giving people the opportunity to experience jesus through this production online it's amazing it's awesome i love it jennifer you and your husband you started serving yeah. and your kids no one specifically asked you to get involved you just said yes quick yeah. testimony yeah we were We'd had our kids that had gone through toddler. They were about first, second grade, and we were trying to find a way to serve, that we could serve as a family together and be together. And so we decided we were going to greet. And so we started greeting on Saturday nights with our family, um, being at the doors, finding that place. Um, and, you know, over the years, we've just continued to do that. My kids are teenagers now. They serve in the parking lot on Saturday nights. Um, we help with the whole dream team. And for us, it was, where can we fit in? We really wanted to instill in our kids what's our part in the local church because we believe that the church itself is what it is because of the people who are in it. Right. Everyone has a part, that, that dream team that, that serves out in the lobbies, in the parking lot, that serves with the Champions Club and in the kids and in the nursery. All of those are parts that usher in people, make them feel welcome from the first people who wave at them in the parking lot, that drive them to the door, that um, like he said, you know, shook their hands the ushers get them to their seats. All of those are part of preparing their hearts to hear what God has planned for them to hear from up here. So you've got the drama and you think, well, that's just, I'm never gonna do that. That's okay, because there's a part and there's a place. And you can find a place. Every single person can find a place to serve and be part of the church here. Yeah, you know, and I think about this, that all of us are invited. We're all called. And you may not feel qualified, but that's okay. None of us do. But God will qualify you if you'll just say yes. You say, well, what's my next step? I'm glad you asked. Out in the lobby, right after service, there is a sign-up booth that says next step. And uh, you can actually come to the growth track today. We're gonna serve lunch for free. My wife and I are gonna be sharing there if she doesn't have the baby here um, in the next moments. But we're gonna be doing lunch in there. And then after growth track, in two weeks, we've got Walk It Out outreach happening. It's free. It's an opportunity for you to do a mission trip right here in Tulsa. Come and serve your city. Come and be a part of it. Make some new friends. How do you make a big church feel small? You say yes. When there's something from the platform that's spoken, when there's something in the bulletin, you say, I'm gonna go check out that connect group. I'm gonna go to that outreach. Yeah, I'm gonna do what Lauren did. I'm gonna raise money and go on a mission trip. When you say yes, your whole world will change. As we end today, I wanna show you one last video and then out of this, we're gonna have our dismissal and opportunity to give. But check this out. This is your generosity making a difference. In 2018, 12 projects in 12 months. Check out April's project that we're a part of. Hey, Victory, I wanna bring you this month's 12 and 12 update. I'm sitting here with one of our missionaries, Joel Savage, who lives in Trujillo, Peru. And part of our 12 and 12 projects are going towards a school project that we're working on with Joel. Joel, we're so excited about this school project. Tell us what is God doing with the children in Peru? The area of the new school in Cajamarca, it's so beautiful, but at the same time, there's so much need. And so it's one of those places that you get caught up looking at the mountain and it's so beautiful. And then you look around and you realize that God is needed there and there's something that needs to change for these children. This facility is, is not gonna be used just for a school, but it's also gonna be used for a church building. It's gonna be used for a community center to be a light and reach the community. And it's gonna be used on the weekends to get the kids in and off the streets. So we're excited for this facility to be used in all these different ways. Thank you for sowing into the children of Peru. Your giving is making an impact here. Come on, that's awesome.
Well, this is our missions weekend, and right now we're gonna give to God. And what are we giving towards? We're giving towards that project there. At the end of your row, there's envelopes. And I wanna encourage you to give today. Maybe you've never given to God ever in your life. Maybe you gave a year ago, and it's been a year since the last time you gave a dollar. But I'll tell you this, the greatest investment we can make with our finances is in God's kingdom. The people you saw on the stage, the people that responded to Jesus at Easter, the thousands of lives across two weeks, Spring Break Missions and Easter, as a church, you reached 100,000 people. You saw 10,000 people give their life to Jesus. That's 10% of the 100,000 we reached that gave their lives to Jesus. That is incredible as a local church right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. But you know, this weekend, as we get ready to give, we're giving a tithe, which is 10% of our income. Just this last week, my little boy, Liam, he went on an Easter egg hunt at Papa and Gigi's house and he had eggs with coins and dollars in it. He was so excited. I'm gonna buy myself a toy. I said, Liam, let's set aside just a little bit that you're gonna give to God, 10%. He said, no, no, daddy. This is my money, my money. Everybody said, my money. But you know, when you live with a my money mentality, you miss out on God's provision in your life. I said, Liam, if you'll honor God with 10% of this, give in, in, in children's church, give in the nursery. He said, well, well, what am I giving towards? I said, you're gonna give towards little boys and girls in Peru, in Truio, Peru, that don't have what you have, that don't get to wear the clothes you get to wear, that don't have air conditioning in their house. And you're gonna pay for those kids to know about Jesus, to experience his love, to have a air conditioned school room. It's gonna make an impact in one of the poorest areas in Peru. He got excited. He said, okay, I'll help those boys and girls. See, when we move from my money mentality to his money mentality, all of a sudden, the Jehovah Jireh gets involved. It, it not only brings provision into our life, it brings greater joy. You're a part of something that's bigger than you. So as we give, there's ways to do it online or text to give. Right after this offering song, I'm gonna have an opportunity for us to pray together, for us to respond to Jesus today. I pray that you don't slip out too early because these last few minutes will be powerful. But Lord, I pray over every seed that's being sown today. God, every penny. And I thank you, Lord, for that school in Trio, Peru. God, that it's gonna be finished, completed, that today, God, this offering will help cover it above and beyond. God, that it will continue to cover all the outreaches we're doing as a church, ministering to people here and through the Dream Center. And God, I thank you, Lord, for every need represented in this room. I pray for college students, for moms and dads, God, for singles in this room, for single parents in this room, believing God to pay the bills, all the things they have. I thank you that you are faithful. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. So Lord, we trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God as we give. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Light a flame in my soul for every eye to see. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. across this room. Jesus asked Peter that day while they were having breakfast on the beach, do you love me? Peter said, yes, of course I love you. He said, feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Peter said, yes, of course I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? He asked him three times. See, Peter had denied Jesus three times just weeks prior to this. I believe Jesus was restoring Peter and preparing Peter for what he was about to do. 
began to tell Peter about the future of his life, that God was going to use him, and that it wasn't going to be easy. God wants to use you. God wants to do a work in you and through you. Is it going to be easy? No, but it's going to be worth it. All you have to do is say yes. Some of you are at a crossroads right now, and you know God's put some things in your heart, but maybe you've just been saying, maybe, maybe. One of these days, I'll get around to it. One of these days, it's time to say yes today. Maybe you're here right now and you can relate to Jason Wilson. Maybe you've gotten in trouble, done some things you shouldn't do, sin. Maybe you feel disqualified. You feel like God couldn't use you. God wants to redeem you today. He wants to wash away every sin, every stain, every regret. Maybe you sinned last night. Maybe you sinned this morning right before church. God still loves you. He still wants to use your life for His purpose. He still has a plan for you. He's not finished with you yet. Just because you feel unqualified doesn't mean He can't qualify you, but you've got to say yes. I want us just to bow our heads and close our eyes all over this place. If you're here right now and you need God, you need His forgiveness in your life, you're ready for a brand new start, a new beginning. You know that you've been messing around. You know that God, God wants to have complete Lordship of your life, but maybe you've just been holding off. Today, you're ready to say, yes, Lord, I repent of sins. God, be the Lord of my life. All over this room and watching online, if that's you, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. Today is a day of new beginnings. One, doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Two, don't look around. This is between you and God. Three, slip your hand up. You're saying, I'm saying yes today. Hands going up from the front to the back. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, in the back. Just keep your hands up. You're saying, yeah, I need Jesus. I need His grace. I need a new beginning. I'm ready for a fresh start. I'm ready to go all in with God. Yeah, powerful, powerful. Secondly, you're here and you say, Paul, I'm saved. I, I know God. But it's been a long time since I've said yes. I've just been coming to church, but I haven't really been involved like I know I could be, like I know I wanna be. Maybe watching the testimonies today on this stage, you were realizing God's inviting you to be a part of the church, the church that God wants to use you in this hour, maybe to go on a mission trip, to lead an outreach, to start a connect group, to get involved again. Maybe you said yes 30 years ago, but God's saying it's time to say yes again. It's time to say yes again. For some of you, it's time to say yes for the first time to get involved right here. If that's you and you're ready to say yes to that next assignment God has for you, I want you to lift your hand up. You know who you are. God's speaking to you all through the service. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You might be an entire family and you say, we're going to start serving together like Jennifer and Chris. We're going to start getting involved in the Champions Club at the Dream Center. I'm going to go on a mission trip this next year. I'm going to get involved in that Walk It Out outreach. I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines. It's time to say Yes, if you raise your hand for either of those, would you leave your seat? Take a step towards your destiny. Take a step towards your yes. Come and join me at this altar right here, right now. Cheer on brave men, brave women, brave college students, brave singles and married couples. God's not finished with you yet. Maybe you're saying yes to stepping into a new you. You know things need to change in your life. You're saying yes to leave behind some old habits leave behind some old ways of living. You're saying, yes, God, yes, God, I want, I want you to use my life for your glory. Yes, God, I wanna start giving till it hurts. I wanna start serving others. I wanna start sacrificing even when it hurts. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the message today. I pray it inspired you. I pray it challenged you. I pray that it caused you to even think about where God wants to use you in your sphere of influence today. God wants you to be a part of the Breakfast Club, a part of the church that's changing the neighborhood, the community that you live in. Even though you're connected with us online, you may feel like, Paul, I can't really uh, get there. I live in another city, another state, maybe even another country. You can start a group right in your home. Maybe you could even start a watch party, a Breakfast Club party that watches the message every week and then walks it out in your neighborhood, lives it out, goes and serves somewhere in the city, making a difference, sharing the love of Jesus with the people all around you. Hey, we wanna invite you to be a part of this ministry by doing a few things. One, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, you can subscribe today. Two, leave a comment and share this message with others. Copy and paste the link, send it in a text or share it on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And then last but not least, we wanna invite you to give. 
Today, your dollars can make a difference, just like you saw in the message today. When we give financially, we're able to help build schools in places like Trujillo, Peru, help establish missions rescue homes in places like Myanmar. When you give financially into God's kingdom, it goes so much further than our own feet could go. So today you can do it. There's a link to do it right there uh, on this page. We love you so much. We're praying for you. Your best days are right in front of you.